now we come to the question of duppies. We move now from street donkeys and rolling calves um, to duppies. And that next area that we, we look at um, is, uh, will help us to understand who the duppies are. For those of you who come from North America or from Britain, you will not be familiar with this term. Um, simply put, duppies are ghosts or disembodied spirits of, ans of dead ans ancestors, and they're associated with darkness. Thank you for light, Mr. Worm. <laughs> Although they're not necessarily confined only to night, they're associated large with night. Strangely enough, in Caribbean folktale tradition, many a duppy tale is related at night. When the listener might have to leave home for paths, two paths where every bush blown by the wind might bear witness to the truthfulness of the griot. And I have a friend who told me the story that he was on home, going to his home after going to, a cinema, going to cinema and seeing a horror picture. And as he was on his way home, he looked close by, his, by the step of the home and he saw as there were somebody beckoning. So he stopped for a while, and the, the, the thing stopped. But then he started to move, and again, he saw the beckoning. So he did what many brave Barbadian boys do. He took up a rock stone, <laughs> and he threw it at this thing. And as he threw it at this thing, it still continued to beckon. So he ran past home and ran to his grandmother's house and went to sleep there. The next morning, when he got enough bravery to return to his house, he looked near the step, and there was, right near the step, was an edo plant. You know edo? And the edo was a very tall edo plant, and the top of the leaves, obviously, as they moved like that, in the breeze, looked as though they were beckoning him. So much for the myths. These traditions of nighttime have largely disappeared with the lighting of the night with street lights and other lighting, and the cutting down of bush and trees. It is, however, a tradition of venerable age dating back to the time that our forefathers arrived in the island from Africa. Frederick Bailey, who arrived in Barbados in, the, in around the 1820s, some 14 years before emancipation came, recorded that the enslaved, quote, I don't know if my daughter is there, she's the one who's my expert, so let me see if she Oh, no, no, that one is something, I, I leave that. The other things I'm going to have to relate to you. Keep that on the screen for a while. You'll understand what that is. He relates, quote, that the enslaved sat up during the greater part of the moonlight night, chattering together and telling Nancy stories. That is, this is a, a writer who visits Barbados, 1820, and he says that the um, enslaved were telling Nancy stories. Now, those of us who know anything about Caribbean folk myths and about North American folk myths in Louisiana and places like that know that Nancy stories are a reference to the, um, the, the, um, the Ghanaian Akan folk hero and Nancy, the spider hero. And therefore, these stories that Bailey had captured as he listened to the enslaved people talking were certainly of that West African origin. He dismissed these tales as, quote, nothing more or less than the tales of ghosts and goblins which passed with the Africans by the appellation of jumbies. So there's a term, again, of African origin that he has imported into his narrative that, that tells us what another word, another name for duppies. Now, whatever Bailey's view of, the, of these folk tales, there was a synergy between the, the um, griot, that is the teller of the tale, and the listener. All of them, that is the teller and the listener, held the belief that a person's duppy roam for 40 days and nights before going to a final rest. So if your relative died for 40 days and 40 nights, your relative will be, um, the spirit of your relative, your duppy will be roaming. And during that time, Barbados believed that the duppy could molest an enemy. This is Adonis Ford's uh, view. He's a Barbadian a writer and researcher. That during this period, the duppy could ride the enemy in his sleep. So many Barbadians to this day report that they're sleeping and there's a sudden feeling of pressure on their chest or somewhere in the body and they have become convinced that the duppy has been riding them during their sleep. There were even trees such as a silk cotton tree that were associated with duppies. 
Indeed, the word dapi is derived from a West African word, a three word. That word is T-W-I, three word, Dupont, D-U-P-O-N, which refer to the roots of such trees. And there's a tradition among the Akan of Ghana that located the presence of spirits at places where the cotton tree or the baobab tree um, grew. So there are these, these traditions among, held among Africans. Now, out of the traditions that spoke of the existence of duppies, there grew an elaborate counter duppy myth. In order if you believe in duppies, you have to find somewhere to deal with duppies. So there are many practices. One of them is the practice of throwing rum in the corner of the house to placate the spirits of the departed, leading to the complaint from some of those who are participating in a, in a little bit of rum drinking that that's a waste of good rum. <laughs> but even though they say that, they themselves in their turn will throw a little piece in the corner for the duppy. Secondly, in many Barbadian homes, as, in, as indeed in homes of other Caribbean territories, they developed the practice, practice of sprinkling sand or marl in front of the doorway. Apparently, the duppy had to count each grain before entry could be effected. And this process took so long that the duppy faced the problem that daylight would come before it could finish. The notion being that it had to return to the grave before daylight. In Beckwith's research on Jamaica, it was known that the belief was also held that one could use pebbles or even rice. And there in Jamaica, the view was that the du that duppies cannot count beyond three. <laughs> so the idea was that, and, and when they got to three, they had to count, start all over again. So they never finished counting, and then they, they would return um, to the grave um, where, where they come from. Additionally, there's a practice of walking backward into the house. This was based on the belief that the duppy walk in the footsteps of the intended victim and can be tricked into leaving rather than entering the house. <laughs> now, again, in the case of Jamaica, Beckwith's research shows that horn and certain herbs smoked in a pipe or burned in a pan was also a good remedy against duppies. In Barbados, the favorite was and is, and I look around just us in case that there's someone who might um, clear, care to tell me of their own experience with this. Um, but the, uh, <laughs> the favorite was a gum called asafetida or asafetida, which is often referred by its informal names as giant fennel, devil's dung, or stinking gum. Some is called um, fennel or feather tea. So you burn this rather obnoxious substance because the notion was that it will keep away the duppies.